Hi everybody, this is a brief video about the Land Cruiser 70 Series traction systems. The 70 Series is a part-time four-wheel drive. You drive it in two-wheel drive on high traction surfaces such as bitumen and four-wheel drive on low traction surfaces such as dirt roads, mud or sand. The modes it's got are controlled by a old-fashioned transfer case lever. You have H2, high-range two-wheel drive. You have H4, high-range four-wheel drive, a neutral position, and L4, which is low-range four-wheel drive. There is no low-range two-wheel drive position, unless you have an older model and you can set the hubs to free, in which case you'll have, in effect, low-range two-wheel drive. There are also, on most variants, front and rear cross axle differential locks. You engage that by that button, and first of all you have to engage the rear, then you can engage the rear as well as the front. At the front of the car, there are freewheeling hubs, which are set to either lock, which you should have for off-road, or auto, auto, which you can use for on-road and off-road driving. You can also drive safely on-road in two-wheel drive with them in the lock position. Here's what the dash looks like. First off, that icon there means four-wheel drive is engaged. The one above it means that the front and the rear cross-axle lockers are engaged. You can tell that by the position of the X on the axle. The TRC off, that stands for traction control, and that is actually brake traction control. That is disabled as the cross-axle differential locks are engaged. That icon there is the stability control and because it's in low range and the lockers are engaged that is also entirely disabled as is the ABS. Okay now let's take a look at the LC79 systems in action. First off Hill of Truth with no traction control or lockers. LC79 low range, traction control disabled, we're going to let it idle up and see how far it gets. Few more okay, what's happening here is that the front differential and in fact the rear are equalizing torque. The right wheel only gets as much torque as it, sorry, the left wheel only gets as much torque as it needs to turn the right wheel. So all that's going to happen is that the front right and rear left are just going to continue to spin and that will as far as the, that's going to be as far as the vehicle goes unless we come back and just take more momentum. Yep, that's nothing going to happen there. The back left wheel is spinning as well. Right, go back down. Okay, here we've got a brake traction control system and that will detect the spinning wheel, on, which is going to be the front right and rear left. That will apply the brakes to those wheels only and, it, and that will have the effect of increasing torque to the front left and rear right, which may or may not be enough to get the vehicle up the hill. You can see more about brake traction control on the linked video. I'll get to the same point, but just give it some revs now. Look at the rear wheel. Okay, now we have both fr front and rear cross axle lockers. So we have the rear cross axle locker only engaged. So that means that the rear right will maximize its traction. But is that going to be enough to get the car up the hill? Okay, so again, increasing the revs makes no difference at all. The uh, rear axle is rotating. But that's nothing doing on the front right axle, so front um, right wheel, so we can't go anywhere. Okay, so at the moment both rear wheels are spinning, the front right wheel is spinning, but there is very little torque delivered to the front left wheel, and that is the wheel we need to have torque so that we can continue up the hill. Traction control couldn't get, get us enough torque there, the rear axle is doing all it can, and the front axle is being let down by the front left wheel. Now we have both front and rear cross axle lockers engaged. In this case, brake traction control is entirely disabled. Reason being, brake traction control needs a difference of wheels, wheel speeds on an axle to work, and with lockers, both wheels have to spin at exactly the same speed.
So in this case, the front and rear cross axle lockers are the best situation to get up this hill. The reason being is that there is quite a bit of traction. It's just a question of getting that traction to the correct wheels and we don't need to turn the vehicle. It will just go straight up. Also, the traction control system on the LC79 is really not that effective compared to other Toyota vehicles such as the Prado and LC200. Okay. Here we have the LC79 again. It is cross-axled, which means that we have the vehicle's wheels resting on the front left and rear right. It is in mud, and we're going to attempt to drive it forwards. Okay, rear locker only. Drive forward slowly. Back to the rear locker only. Both rear wheels are, as you can see, spinning. There's no traction on the rear left. There is some traction on this wheel, but there's no torque down to it. And as you can see, there's no traction on the front right because it's actually in the air. So there's really only two wheels of traction, front left and rear right. The rear lock has done its best to put uh, traction to the rear right, but that's not enough to move the vehicle forwards. So what we're going to do now is to disable the rear locker and use traction control only to try and move the vehicle forwards. So what you saw there was initially nothing happened and then as revs were increased the um, the individual winning spinning wheel front right and rear left were braked and that had the effect of increasing torque on the front left and rear right wheels and the vehicle was able to move forwards in a way which the rear locker could not manage. Uh, if we tried front and rear lockers it also could have driven forwards as you will see shortly. Okay, that's the vehicle just spinning with brake traction control and nothing else. As you can see, no matter how hard we spin it, um, the brake traction control system on the 79 is not good enough to increase torque to the front left hand wheel and the um, uh, rear right, um, which are just spinning. If that was a 200 or a Prado, then it would have been. So what we do is we try something. Okay, we stop there. Okay, now engage both lockers. Okay, both front and rear cross axle lock locks are in, increased, engaged, and the vehicle, as you'll see, is able to drive forward. However, it will slip to the right because it's just a slippery track. And very slowly drive forwards with both lockers engaged. Stop there. So summary then, what systems to use when? On road, always drive the LC70 in H2, two wheel drive mode. You can set the hubs to free or to auto. You will get fractionally better fuel economy if they're in auto or free, um, but you can drive them perfectly well in lock, provided the vehicle is in two wheel drive. For any form of dirt road, recommend high range four wheel drive because you get better traction that way and there's uh, no risk of wind up because dirt roads are relatively loose surface. For tougher and slower going, slot the car into low range, and that's your low set of gears, that's L4. For higher speed, loose terrain where you're moving relatively quickly, use either high range 4, if you're basically above 40 k's an hour or thereabouts, or low range. I'd avoid use of differential locks because you've got pretty much all four wheels on the ground at all times and more or less equal traction. In ruts, rocks and slow going you definitely want low range and that is when you will find the cross axle lockers to be of great use. And in shallow mud and sand, again I'd go back to high four or low four depending on the speed and not avoid and not use the cross axle differential locks. Thanks for watching, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook for more content on four wheel drives, cars and towing.